Hello there and a very good evening. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. For the News First team, I'm Dasani Athada, along with our interpreter tonight, Brian De Cruz. Starting off with a look at your headlines. Is India behind the April 21st attacks? A BBC report questions. Citizens aged between 30 and 60 years to be inoculated with the anti-COVID-19 vaccine from the first week of March. Government plans to establish a tribunal for social and electronic media. Will the rare tree in Daralua be saved from destruction? Army continues search operations for missing youth at the mini world's end. On to your top story tonight, who was the mastermind behind the 2019 April 21st attacks? Was India involved in the bombings that shook the country? The BBC Singular Service made a revelation on this matter today. The BBC Singhala Service had filed a report based on the evidence produced at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry that probed the 2019 April 21st attacks and on the facts highlighted by former parliamentarian Nalinda Jayatissa, who was a member of a parliamentary select committee that probed the bombings. According to the BBC report, investigators have learnt that although Mohammad Zaharan Hashim was believed to be the mastermind behind the bombings, the said individual had not manipulated the attacks. Senior Police Superintendent Shania Besekara, who is under remand custody, had told the Presidential Commission that he suspects the involvement of a hidden force behind the April 21st attacks. Retired Senior DIG Ravi Seneviratna had earlier told the Presidential Commission that Zaharan Hashim could not be the individual who had orchestrated the attacks. He had insisted that the investigations into the incident would be incomplete without identifying the entity behind the attacks. The BBC report recalled that SSP Shania Besekara had given evidence before the Commission stating that any terrorist leader in the world has not died as a suicide bomber. Meanwhile, former parliamentarian Nalinda Jatissa, who served on the Parliamentary Select Committee that probed the April 21st attacks, had told the BBC Singhala Service that he believes India was involved behind the bombings. He had made these remarks based on evidence and other investigative material that had been produced before the Select Committee. Former parliamentarian Nalinda Jatissa had noted that India's intelligence service was the first to issue warnings of an impending suicide attack on the 4th of April 2019. The Indian High Commission in Colombo was identified as a target, but intelligence reports did not mention whether additional security had been requested or provided. The Indian Defence Secretary paid a sudden one-day visit to Sri Lanka on the 8th of April 2019 and no special security arrangements were made for him on that day. Sara Elias Pulastini, the wife of the suicide bomber who detonated his explosives at the Katuapitiya church, fled to India after the attacks. The lack of interest displayed by Sri Lankan authorities in extraditing her for questioning and that India too had not displayed willingness to extradite her. The police have not yet questioned Sara and the Presidential Commission of Inquiry has not displayed any interest on that matter. The investigations into the statements made by Namal Kumara claiming of a conspiracy to assassinate the then President Maitri Parasiri Sena and Gota Biraj Baksa had been stalled. An Indian national who was allegedly involved in the assassination attempt had been released after declaring him as a mentally ill patient and that the investigations of the Police Terrorism Investigation Division to arrest Zara and Hashim had been halted based on statements made by Namal Kumara. Former parliamentarian Nalinda Jatis pointed out that only an experienced group armed with advanced technology and a strong intelligence network can carry out such an attack. Accordingly, he had observed that there is no evidence suggesting that Zahra and Hashim was linked to such a strong network. Meanwhile, the leader of the Janata Vimukti Peramuna, Anrukumar Disanayaka, has insisted that the report of the Presidential Commission that probed the 2019 April 21st attacks must be submitted to the parliament. The government knows that the report of the commission has dug their own grave. During the presidential election, they insisted that all individuals linked to the April 21st attacks must be punished. But based on the report that has been compiled by the presidential commission that probed the bombing, we wish to question the entity that manipulated Zaharan, who was the mastermind behind the attacks. The entity involved in organizing the attacks has not been revealed. The concerns raised by the government have dug their own grave. That is why we can observe that the government is attempting to conceal the report. 
The wife of the suicide bomber at the Katwa Pitya Church who was identified as Sara has fled to India. However, the government did not take any steps to produce Sara before the presidential commission. The president visited India. On the other hand, the Indian External Affairs Minister and Defence Secretary visited Sri Lanka on multiple occasions. However, they did not convey the need to bring down the wife of the suicide bomber to assist in the relevant investigations. This shows that they are displaying a tendency to conceal certain facts related to the April 21st attacks to prevent them from being revealed to the general public. General Secretary of the SLPP Attorney at Law Sagar Akariyavasam says Minister Vimal Viravansa should apologize for a statement made by him during an interview. In an interview with the weekend newspaper, Minister Vimal Viravansa had stated the following. Gotabe Rajapaksa rendered an invaluable service to the nation during his tenure as the Secretary of Defence. Although he has taken over the reins as president, he is somewhat inexperienced in the political arena. He should have been given the leadership of the SLPP. It is not suitable to simply limit him to only the presidential secretariat instead of bringing him to this position. That will only disrupt the link between him and the other parliamentarians. This in turn does not bode well for the future development of the nation. I do not understand why no attempts are being made to foster such a relationship. Sri Lanka The SLPP gives strict priority to discipline. His statement is a serious one. It implicates that Mahindra Raj Paksa should be removed from the leadership and it should be given to the president. Vimal Viravansa should know this is not his party. Therefore, he has no right to make decisions on behalf of this party nor make statements. We do not intend to stoop that law to gain political mileage. As a party, our stance is that he should issue a public apology over the statement and retract his claims. This government ascended to power through a massive mandate. We are a gargantuan tree. No one can uproot this tree. We will not allow that to happen either. The only solution for this is for him to retract his claim. What capacity does Vimal Viravansa bear to attempt this move to remove the fifth executive president of the nation, Mahindraj Paksa, from his post? Prior to the election defeat in 2015, Vimal Viravansa made damaging statements while representing our faction and mentioned certain economic assassins. As a result, the 2015 2015 election was a failure. We held discussion at his residence, which was led by him. There are two doctors behind those talks. Both of them are on the payroll of foreign intelligence agencies. This is stated with responsibility. We can reveal further details in the future if needed. These were the views that were expressed by the convener of the left front, Chamira Pereira. Yesterday we saw national newspapers carrying several news reports on the leadership of the SLPP. We saw that Vibhan Virawansa had expressed his candid views on the leadership of the SLPP. This shows that there is a conspiracy regarding the SLPP leadership. There is suspicion to this effect. We know that Mahindra Rajapaksa is the leader of the SLPP. Therefore, is this a conspiracy against Mahindra Rajapaksa? This is a serious problem. These lawmakers have been elected to parliament as a result of Mahindra Rajapaksa's efforts. There is no smoke without fire. Therefore, there must be some internal conflict. We don't know what it is. Are they trying to lead the country towards destruction? The government is making various remarks on slashing the cost of goods. They announced dates on which it would come into effect. There is no need to do that. Prices of goods can be reduced by stopping fraud and corruption. The sugar scam is worse than the central bank bond scam. They looted sugar as well. That is why it is difficult to reduce the cost of goods. 
ඒ බඩුමිල අඩු කරගන්න බැරුව මේ තටම තටම ඉන්නේ දූෂණේ වංචාව තියෙන කොට පුළුවන්ද බඩුමිල වල අඩු කරන්න ඉස්ස The leader of Sri Lanka's indigenous community filed an application at the appeal court against giving away lands of the indigenous community to companies for maize cultivation. The leader of the indigenous community Uruvalige Vanilato and the Center for Environmental Justice filed a writ application with the Court of Appeal seeking an order to prevent the allocation of indigenous community lands to leading companies for the cultivation of maize. a group including the minister of wildlife secretary of the ministry of environment the mahavali development authority the director generals of the department of wildlife conservation and the department of forest were named as the respondents in the application the petitioners including indigenous community leader uruvali ge vanilato pointed out that steps taken by the mahavali development authority to give away more than 5000 acres of forest land that had been inhabited by the indigenous community for centuries has deprived them of their livelihood the petitioners pointed out the companies that have acquired these lands have unlawfully closed down canals that carry water to the rambakan noya mehidi petsam karwan chodana karun labanne The petitioners including Vanilato have pointed out that the powers vested with the Mahavali Development Authority through the Forest Conservation Ordinance must be utilized in a responsible manner and that the power had been misused in this occasion. Mehidi visheshema Vanilato athulu petsam karuwan chodana karala thiyena. The land near the Rombakan Noya that has been allocated for maize cultivation contains clean water and is also home to remnants of the ancient irrigation system the leader of the indigenous community pointed out that this land faces a risk of total destruction due to the proposed project attempts to save the rare plant species identified as the sri lankan legume ocrodia zeylanica have been successful to a certain extent Today officers of the company carrying out construction activities on the portion of the highway from Kadawatha to Mirigama arrived at the site for inspection purposes. Oba tu miyala mogeda? Ha? Me missa gogeda? Missa aayatane mogadda? Api highway ke me consultant. Ha right. This was not cutting with not cutting the tree. Yeah. फ्लोरा Yesterday an attempt to damage the plant was avoided through the intervention of the zonal forest officer of Gampaha Devani Jayatilaka shouldn't officers of this caliber who fight to protect these treasures for future generations be commended and appreciated she previously gained notoriety when she stood up against politicians and raised her voice to protect the mangrove ecosystem surrounding the Nigamba lagoon Environmentalists and other pressure groups have opposed a recommendation made to uproot the tree and relocate it elsewhere. We doubt that Sri Lanka possesses the expertise to relocate such a massive tree. The relocation process has been handed over to a firm that has been accused of illegal grabbing of lands which belong to the Department of Wildlife Conservation. They have not evaluated this matter before commencing the relocation process. සමාගම කර තමයි මේ ගහ පරිස්ථාපනය කරන්න ලබා දීලා තියෙන්නේ. ස්ටේට් මිනිස්ටර් ඩොක්ටර් සුදර්ශනී ෆර්නාන්ඩෝ පුලේ කන්ෆර්ම්ස් දැට් ද ජනරල් පබ්ලික් ඔෆ් ද කන්ට්‍රි විල් බී ඉනොකියුලේටඩ් වෙත් ද කොවිඩ් 19 වැක්සින් ෆ්‍රොම් ද ෆස්ට් වීක් ඔෆ් නෙක්ස්ට් මන්ත්. ෂි සෙඩ් දැට් සීනියර් සිටිසන්ස් අබව් ද ඒජ් ඔෆ් 60 ඇන්ඩ් මෙම්බර්ස් ඔෆ් ද කන්ට්‍රීස් වර්ක් ෆෝස් බිට්වීන් ද ඒජස් ඔෆ් 60 ඇන්ඩ් 30 විල් බී වැක්සිනේටඩ්. 
We have planned to conduct the vaccination program at 4,000 vaccination centers. 2,000 vaccination centers will be active every day and 300 people will receive the vaccine daily. We will begin the vaccination program during the first week of March. You should all prepare yourselves for that. We are due to receive 8.4 million vaccines, enough to vaccinate 20% of our population through the COVAX program. Meanwhile, the government has also already made preparations to import 18 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. Meanwhile, South Africa has suspended providing the AstraZeneca vaccine in the country. This is the same vaccine provided in Sri Lanka. South Africa suspended the distribution of this vaccine, citing that the vaccine was not effective against the new strain of the COVID-19 virus spreading in the country. A new strain of the virus has been found in South Africa. They are still testing as to how the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine combats this strain. Until they get the results of these tests, they have suspended the distribution of the AstraZeneca vaccine. A new strain of the virus was discovered in England as well, but the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine was found to be effective against this strain as well. Everyone coming into Sri Lanka are quarantined for two weeks, and because of that, the possibility of the virus entering Sri Lanka is very low. Meanwhile, five COVID-19 related deaths were reported in the island yesterday. The increased death toll in the country now stands at 356. The number of COVID-19 cases in the country has increased to 69,348. For the first time, the number of COVID-19 cases in the Badula district surpassed the number of cases reported in Colombo during the single day. The risk in the districts outside the western province has tripled since then. If we don't correct the mistakes that we have made, the country will fall to an even worse situation by the end of the month. A number of areas were released from isolation as of 5 a.m. this morning. These areas include Gothamipura Flats, Gothamipura Visihatravatta, Gothamipura Hattaravatta, and the Veluana Road in Dematagoda. The Kumari Mulagrama Seva Division under the Pugoda Police Division, Galalua in the Minuangoda Police Division, the Juma Masjid Mavata, Hidra Mavata. Avatar, Alutpara and Akaragoda and Bolana South in the Ambalantota Divisional Secretariat. Besides limited lockdowns, there is no need for an island-wide lockdown. When the virus first broke out, we placed the entire country under lockdown because we did not know much information on the virus. We didn't know how exactly it spreads and this is the reason why we placed the entire country under lockdown. But now lockdown measures do not yield much results. Small groups will be placed under lockdown in limited areas. Meanwhile, Colombo Fort and surrounding areas were searched today to look into whether the general public are following health guidelines. The police strictly advise people who are not wearing face masks and those who are not wearing face masks properly. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a letter to State Minister of COVID Disease Control, Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pule, the College of Medical Educationists have requested the vaccination of all healthcare profession students be given high priority. The letter read that this will assist the universities in conducting the training programs without interruption. While the situation with regards to COVID-19 in the country continues in that manner, prices of vegetables have hiked yet again. Prices of many vegetables had risen today at the Thambudvegama dedicated economic zone. The wholesale price of a kilo of green chili was priced at 600 rupees, while carrot, beans and pumpkin was priced at 200, 130 and 120 rupees respectively. There were incessant rains in the recent past. The harvests of farmers had depleted heavily as a result that has caused the sudden surge in prices. 27 essential commodities will be sold at Satosa and cooperative food outlets under concessionary rates from today. Accordingly, a kilo of red raw rice will be sold at 93 rupees, while a kilo of nadu rice will be sold at 96 rupees, and a kilo of kiri samba at 125 rupees. Wheat flour will be sold at Satosa and cooperative food outlets at 84 rupees a kilo. In addition, white sugar will be sold at 99 rupees a kilo and brown sugar at 125 rupees a kilo. Dal has been priced at 165 rupees a kilo, while the price of big onions has been fixed at 120 rupees. 
Potatoes cultivated locally will be sold at 180 rupees at Satosa and cooperative food outlets. Prices of goods increase in line with the Singhala and Tamil New Year. We hope to maintain these rates until the end of April. Eighty percent of the goods have been distributed, but it will require about two weeks to receive imported canned fish and soap. We will distribute all other goods to the shops in the next two days. At present, samba rice and white sugar will be sold at a maximum of two kilos. Samba, <laughs> I would like to ask Minister Bandulugunavardhana to identify the distribution points at which we can purchase the 27 essential commodities at the concessionary rates provided by the government. Bombay onions were not available at some points. Rice was not available at certain shops. Products are rationed at some shops and we can only purchase a kilo or two of rice and sugar. What steps has the government taken to address this issue? Bandulugunavardhana said that a kilo of sugar will be sold at a price of 85 rupees a kilo. This was even gazetted. But today there is no sugar for 85 rupees. A kilo of sugar at Satose is sold at 99 rupees. Even at 99 rupees we can only purchase a kilo or two of sugar. This is a kilo of big onion sold at a supermarket for 90 rupees. But in the list of 27 items, the price of a kilo of big onions is 127 rupees. How can Satosa sell big onions with an extra 35 rupee margin? <laughs> The private bus owners association has decided to postpone a proposed strike by one week following a discussion with state minister Ajit Nivad Kabral. Following the meeting which lasted nearly an hour, representatives of the private bus owners association claimed that a certain faction of the association had opposed the decision to postpone the strike. <laughs> However, all factions had agreed to postpone the strike. The central government and the state minister had paid attention to two main points in our demands. He agreed to provide the relief we demanded including grace periods for leasing. This is only a temporary postponement. We will commence it next Tuesday. This leasing issue does not only plague bus owners. It is common to most. It has aggravated for most bus owners. We can resolve it for them. Even as we speak, the BOC and the People's Bank has joined hands based on a request by the President to provide 300,000 rupees to each person who owns a bus permit at a 4% interest rate. We invite private bus associations to discuss any concerns with us. We will not allow them to strike and cause disruption to the public. Stock trading volumes in the first 22 days of this year had exceeded the annual trading volume seen in six years. According to the Colombo Stock Exchange, the All Share Price Index has retained its position as the best performing primary stock market index in the world, bringing in a turnover of 220 billion rupees. The total turnover of 227.8 billion rupees recorded within the first 22 market days of this year is already higher than the full year figures recorded in 2012, 2013, 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019. The highest annual turnover of 570.3 billion rupees was recorded in the year 2010. With that, we head into... With that, we head into a short commercial break. Stay with us.
News First Special. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa in conversation with Faraz Shaukat Ali on Face to Face. Tuesday, the 9th of February at 9.30 p.m. on TV1. The student movement of free education staged a protest opposite the temple trees today. The protest was staged demanding justice for those who have been wronged in the 2019 advanced level examination while increasing the number of students enrolled in universities. <laughs> Although a meeting was scheduled this evening between an additional secretary attached to the Prime Minister's Secretariat and a limited number of individuals who participated in the protest, the protesters had announced that they would continue with the demonstration until they are provided with the proper response. The recruitment process must give priority to the students who have been mistreated. We need a proper response to this matter. Subsequently, a group of protesters attended a meeting at the Ministry of Education this evening for discussions in this regard. Meanwhile, civic and political groups have revealed that the government is taking steps to suppress social media and electronic media outlets. At present, the government is trying to suppress these institutions in the name of the people. A notice was published in a newspaper yesterday seeking proposals from the public to implement a people-centric media policy. In November last year, the mass media minister said that there is a need for a policy to regulate websites. A couple of weeks later, he said that there is a need for a policy to regulate social media platforms as well. They are trying to amend the Press Council Act once again with the approval of the cabinet. They are trying to set up an institution to hear lawsuits filed against journalists. Earlier newspaper institutions were brought under the Press Council Act. The media was regulated to a certain extent through that piece of legislation. At a certain point, the Press Council acted in a repressive manner. But going one step further and establishing a tribunal translates to the establishment of a body with judicial powers. They are trying to establish a body with judicial powers to take political revenge against media institutions and journalists who expose several matters or bear a stance that is contradictory to the viewpoint of the government. There are laws under which defamation cases can be filed against a media outlet or a journalist for publishing false information. But why is a special tribunal required for this? Who will head this tribunal? This newspaper advertisement has raised very serious concerns. <laughs> When the action filed by George Stewart Health Private Limited against MTV Channels Private Limited over its reportage on rapid antigen tests came up before District Judge of Colombo, Honorable Rashanta Godavella, in court number one today, the learned judge inquired if both parties were ready for oral submissions, at which point counsel for MTV, Mr. Udita Egalaheva, pointed out to court the impact of an enjoining order on the defendant company as it is a media organization. Thereafter, the learned judge suggested to the parties that they could file comprehensive written submissions in lieu of oral submissions. President's counsel representing both parties agreed to this. Accordingly, written submissions are due to be filed by both parties on the 15th of March 2021. Mr. Galaheva, President's counsel, Mr. G. Vantajaya Tilaka, Mr. Niranjan Arul Pragasam, Mr. Damit Karma Ratna, Mr. N. K. Ashokbaran, Mr. Miru Egalaheva and other counsels appeared for the defendant instructed by Mr. G. G. Arul Pragasam. Appearing for the plaintiff were Mr. Romesh De Silva, President's Counsel and Mr. Ruantakure, Attorney at Law. A search operation to locate Dinura Vijay Sundara, a graphic artist attached to Sirasa TV, who had gone missing at the Mini World's End in Madulsima, is currently underway. However, no information has been received yet on the missing individual. 
Dinner Vijay Sundara was part of a 12 member team including 6 doctors that took part in an excursion to the mini world's end last Saturday. The group which had decided to spend their night at the mini world's end had eventually returned to their vehicles at around 3 a.m. due to heavy rains and winds. The police and the army then launched a search operation under the assumption that Dinur Vijay Sundara could have slipped over the observation point on the mountain range. But a heavy fog prevented rescue teams from locating his whereabouts. Accordingly, the army launched a search operation for the second day today in the Kotagam Gramaniladare Division in Bibile. A team comprising 36 army officers is involved in the operation. Ambulances have been placed on standby with the intervention of the divisional secretary and myself. We will use these ambulances if he is discovered alive. If we need the assistance of a helicopter, we will make the relevant arrangements on behalf of this journalist. Search operations that ran into the second day today were postponed until tomorrow. The missing individual is a 35-year-old resident of Maggona in Kalutara. The police has launched an investigation into the incident. We'll be back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Painting of the Holy Shrine of Our Lady of Madhu. An initiative by V-Force, Kansai, Eslon. We are indeed grateful to the government, the V-Force and the Kansai Eslon institution for getting together and doing this project of painting the church at our shrine of Our Lady of Madhu. On Tuesday, the 9th of February. Come at the V Force. Welcome back to the news, still in local news. The People's Rally for Justice, centered around 10 demands that began in Polikhandi in Jaffna, ended last evening. The rally drew to a close with the participation of several individuals yesterday. UN-based non-governmental organization Human Rights Watch has urged Canada to take diplomatic action against the diminishing human rights situation in Sri Lanka. The request comes ahead of the UN's 46th Human Rights Council session, set to begin on the 22nd of this month. In an article published recently, Human Rights Watch recalls that Canada played a key role in 2015 while backing a UN resolution to promote reconciliation and justice in Sri Lanka. The article noted that the human rights situation on the island is deteriorating and that Canada must set up to take diplomatic action once again. And that's a wrap of primetime news for tonight. For the News First team, I'm Dasani Atada along with our interpreter Brian De Cruz. Good night.